Hey everyone, and good day to you all. Today I wanted to talk about my experiences with the Magpul Zukov stock, as I have here in FDE. Of course, they do offer other colors as well. Um, but the reason I wanted to make the review, even though there was a lot of other reviews on this, and it's a very common stock, you can pick this up probably even in your local gun store. Um, but I feel like there are a few points about how the stock is set up that are commonly overlooked. And while this is overall a pretty good stock, uh, I did want to talk about some of the things that uh, you may be, at least for me, I didn't realize when I bought this that they'd be issues, but they kind of are. Um, but I'm going to talk about both the good and the bad uh, as I've had with this uh, stock so far. And we'll go ahead and get started uh, in no particular order with the uh, the butt pad. And I've, ha I've got a little bit over a month of usage with this, and I've been using this pretty heavily lately because I have been wanting to try out this chassis, which I will have a review on uh, probably next week. But just focusing on the stock, so starting with the butt pad, this is a significant improvement over the standard stocks. Uh, what I had on here before was a polymer version of this, so effectively the same. The butt pad is the important thing that I wanted to mention. As you can see, your normal stocks, of course, uh, some of them do have some ribbed sort of texture on the steel butt plate, but generally, even then, this is pretty slick and it likes to move around uh, a good amount. Now, Another stock I am going to be probably comparing this a lot to throughout the video is a uh, Zenico PT3. And just because it's uh, one that I also have on hand. Um, but I have used a lot of other stocks for the AKs over the years. I've had them as well and I'll kind of uh, make some comparisons as much as possible. But of course, I don't have experience with every single stock or their butt pads. But suffice to say, at least in my experience, uh, this butt pad is good. It gives a good amount of texture. One issue I had with the Zenico PT3 as it came from the factory is it shipped with a very thin or very narrow butt pad. Um, and I did replace it with a wider one. Uh, but this Magpul one is, uh, it's pretty good already. It has a nice amount of surface area to uh, dissipate the recoil as well as uh, I just find it feels like it purchases the shoulder better than having a narrower one. Even though, you know, on the Zenico PT3 that is on a... Uh, 545 here so recoil isn't as much of an issue but just overall i always do like having a bit wider of a butt pad it is a lot more comfortable and this is um kind of a hard rubbery material it's not going to give a huge amount and not as much as say a recoil pad or something like that but it does have that texture and it does have that kind of uh feel to it so it, it's good uh, i do like that quite a bit and it's definitely a huge improvement over the standard stock and overall i would say it's pretty comparable to that zenico pt3 stock which is uh one of the best stocks i've used so far and i'll go ahead and just kind of move forward somewhat uh, the next thing you can see here i wanted to talk about is the sling attachment points i do like how these are set up you have a lot of options on this stock for how you want to attach your sling you have a qd push button type of uh, socket here in the back uh, you also have one only on the left side, um, which I, is where I like to have it, just right there. I do like to have the sling somewhat a little bit further in, uh, or you can direct thread it right down here. Uh, usually I do prefer to direct thread my slings, but I don't like to have them that far back. So if I'm going to choose between one or the other, I will just use the QD, which is a bit closer to the receiver itself. And it works good, no complaints there at all. Definitely gives you a lot of options for sling attachment. Um, if I was gonna be a bit nitpicky, as I said, I do prefer direct threading my slings because it is quieter. Um, and I would prefer if they would have had some option to direct thread it right here. But as I said, it's kind of nitpicky and I'm not sure how they would really um, make a direct thread adapter right there without this becoming kind of overly cumbersome. But I thought I should mention it regardless. So the next point, moving forward again, uh, I'll go ahead and touch on actually the adjustment. So you can see right here, I usually run this uh, about one uh, notch out. Uh, that's what's most comfortable for me. Uh, unless I'm wearing body armor, then I just go all the way in. Now this is gonna somewhat tie into my next point that's gonna be on the cheek riser, which you can see here. Uh, one thing also, these cheek risers, they, uh, the, the Zukov stock does not ship with the cheek riser. You have to buy it separately. Um, in my case, uh, they, they have a bunch of different options for heights and all that. This isn't one you can adjust on the fly, unlike on the Zenico PT3, as I said, which I'll keep bringing up. You can adjust this one by uh, turning this out right here, and then you have four levels of adjustment. And I just bought the uh, 
closest size of cheek riser here on the Zukov to how I have it set up there. And it, it's really comfortable. Um, I believe I bought the 0.75, maybe it was the 0.5 height. Not that much higher, but it helps a lot. But the issue with the cheek riser uh, ties into the adjustment. So the nice thing, if you saw that PT3, I really like that they have the cheek riser at the back of the stock. This has the cheek riser at the front. And um, the PT3 is adjustable as well, and the cheek riser moves with you. In this case, if I go ahead and extend this all the way out, and this is how you do it right here, um, the adjustment lever is just kind of uh, flush. And I do like that as well if you are shooting more precision type of shooting and you have your hand back here on the stock, it, it helps so you don't accidentally collapse the stock, which can happen with a lot of, uh, just like your standard um, AR collapsing stocks and all that. But anyway, we'll go ahead and take this out all the way. So, cheek riser, of course, still right there. The issue that this presents is when you go ahead and shoulder, you pretty much can't use the uh, cheek riser at all because it's just so far forward. Um, now this is especially a problem if you're doing the more modern heads up shooting stance where you are more upright in general. I could see you could, if you're doing more of the older style leaning forward a little bit, it'll probably work. You could probably still get your cheek or your chin, whatever kind of weld you want to do, you could get it onto here. But in my case, uh, if I were to extend this all the way out, I can't use it at all. And when it is on this setting I usually run it at, which is one out. Um, I do get some contact, just right there, but uh, it's definitely, uh, I feel like they could have done this a lot better. Um, so that is a little bit of uh, an issue. Uh, as for how the cheek riser itself works, as I mentioned, it doesn't ship with one. Uh, how it works is you have two little um, cuts in the polymer underneath here, kind of on a rail almost, if you want to think of that. Uh, you can't adjust on the rail, mind you, but it's just kind of a good analogy and um, you just take the cheek riser and you just click it on um, it just sits in those little notches and it is tight uh, there's no play in this cheek riser whatsoever it is also quite hard to take off hence why I'm not doing it right now and that takes me to my next point it's a good segue into it uh, the fit and finish of this stock overall it's a very tight stock not to say that it's hard to install because actually the way they have it set up you kind of have a wedge block that goes in here a little bit hard to explain and that's getting into the technical weeds which don't really matter too much but it's very easy to install but it still tightens up really well so you don't have any play when you are shouldering this um, the pt3 stock and now that i've had this for uh i believe a little over a year it is actually loosening up a little bit too much and there's a little bit of wobble in it i don't know if i'll get that on the zukov stock because it doesn't fold fold the same way um, the pt3 is using the hinge in the receiver itself and this has a hinge on the stock itself because this is just on your standard fixed stock type of rear trunnion but this is nice because this does allow you to fold it which i also quite like i always like being able to do this uh, not that i shoot like this uh, which you can do if you don't have the cheek riser another thing um, you can somewhat actuate the controls this way uh, it's not ideal of course you wouldn't want to really do this too much but uh this does fold to the right side. Most AK stocks fold to the left. The benefit this has is it makes the sling just kind of sit a little bit better because if you think about, um, and I don't have one on hand actually right now as an example, but generally on the uh, side folding AK-74 stocks, for instance, uh, they have to put the sling attachment point on the opposite side, which kind of makes everything sit a bit weird on your cheek when you go up to shoulder it. At least that's what I've found. But not really an issue here but then it does become an issue because you can't use safety so uh, and as i said i don't think um, yeah it looks like the cheek riser at this height would be blocking the uh, bolt carrier group from reciprocating as well so both whether you go left side or right side both have their ups and downs if i were to pick one or the other i do prefer actually uh, folding to the left but um, kind of minor because I don't really shoot like this anyway. It's usually just to store it, make it a lot easier to transport it. And as for how this locks in place, um, this doesn't really have an actual lock when it's um, folded like this. Um, it just kind of uh, is tension fit in there. 
Um, but then it does have this button here. I'm just adjusting so you can see that better. So, so there's that button right there. And you just push that in. Very simple. One other thing I wanted to touch on, however, with the fit and finish. As I said, stock itself is quite tight. There's no play in it. However, you do get a bit of play back here uh, when you have it uh, pulled out. Even just one notch as I have it here. If I slide this all the way in, like it is now, you don't have anything. But back here, if I, if I go ahead and shoulder it, in fact, I'll even go ahead and put it at the setting I usually have it at. Even here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it. Uh, but you can definitely feel it, is there, there is a little bit of uh, a push. Uh, and I'm not pushing it too hard into my shoulder. I'm giving it a, you know, a firm amount. But there is some play with how it uh, sits in this particular notch for adjustment. And then one last thing I wanted to say about the cheek riser. This is going to be very specific to your setup, but I thought I'd mention it anyway here. Uh, if you're running a rail section, as I have on this sure shot chassis that comes over your dust cover, where it forces you to take your dust cover off backwards and not being able to lift it like you normally would on an AK. Um, this cheek riser completely blocks this in place. So uh, when I have it set up like this, I do actually need to fold the stock before I'm even able to push this in and then take the dust cover off as normal. Again, that is really completely dependent on your setup. If you get a hinging dust cover or if you're just running iron sights, then you're not gonna have this issue. But uh, it is something to keep in mind. I know that uh, there's a fair amount of uh, companies that sell similar sort of setups where you have to take your dust cover off, kind of force it back. But that's about all that I wanted to talk about. Overall, uh, I did mention quite a few issues with the stock, uh, but overall I actually do really quite like the stock. It does a lot of things right. It is held up really well. As I said, I've been doing quite heavy shooting over this past uh, little bit over a month that I've had this and uh, it's held up great. Uh, that's a lot more than I can say for some of the other AK stocks I've had. For example, uh, I used an ATI in the stock. That's the only stock I've ever owned that has completely fallen apart. Um, I had a, a MOE stock on here at one point way in the past, which uh, always loosened up. Uh, the wedge block, it, it's the same sort of mounting method if you are familiar with the MOE stock, which is just fixed. I'm not sure, maybe it was just a, a bad unit. Maybe I installed it wrong. Uh, I followed their instructions perfectly on this one and it just has held up great. So no complaints there, really good. So let me know if you have any other questions about this stock or anything else. And uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.